Robert was my youngest son of three boys. And what I remember the most about Robert that really stood out was his wonderful personality. He had a, what I, what I would say, a crest smile, you know, um, toothpaste smile. <laughs> he was really goofy. He could always make you laugh. He would make everyone laugh. He would tell a joke. Man, he, was, it, he lights up a room. He was very, very bubbly, energetic, you know, always positive. Me and Robert had a, had a very good relationship. I, can, I constantly think about, you know, some of the things that he said to me that really touches me and really makes me feel good. I knew he wanted to be um, in college. Slowly but surely, I started finding out that he wanted to be in um, journalism and um, he wanted to be a, a, a reporter. So, um, you know, I was like, well, if you're going to go at it, you know, go hard. So he decided that he wanted to be a journalist and move on to be um, a newscaster. And he had transferred to a four-year university, which is a new experience for him. And so on spring break, he was so happy because he did well. His grades and everything were well. So he was celebrating. Um, when Robert texted me and he told me what he wanted to do that weekend, I texted him back, I says, who are you with? So he texted back the name of his friends he was with. I knew him, I said, oh, that's a cool group, that's fine. So I says, okay, please be safe. That was my last text to him, please be safe. I got the call that no parent wants to get. It's the call that every parent dreads. And the call on the line said, hysterically, that the kids had been in an accident and Robert was bleeding from his mouth. And then she told me what hospital she thought that the paramedics took him to. And I remember asking the nurse, I said, how bad is my son hurt? And she said, it's pretty bad. You need to come and bring someone with you. We got there, and they put us in one room. And then they said, OK, we need you to come with us. And we're thinking they're taking us to see Robert, but they're actually taking us to another room. And I'm saying, please, no more rooms, please. Uh, take us to where Robert is. And that's when we found out um, that Robert did not survive the injuries. And um, Rhonda just fell to the floor, and uh, I was just devastated. At the time that they were coming home, it was definitely late. The driver perhaps thinking, wow, well, everybody sleep with me. And I'm feeling it, you know, I'm feeling tired, I'm feeling sleepy. The young lady who was driving became overwhelmed by her drowsiness and sleep, and she went totally to sleep. And that's what caused the accident. <sighs> it was def definitely devastating to hear. Um, to hear that the car flipped five times and then landed up against a building, and the building was the thing that stopped the car from flipping. It was like um, something that you almost can't describe. You, uh, you would expect, you know, your son to outlive you instead of it being the other way around. At that point, we just had to uh, just take our minds to, off the fact that we'll never see him again. It was a really, really, really hard thing. I remember waking up in the morning, and I would have to choose life. Every morning I woke up, I had to make a choice to live and try to find pleasure in life again. And um, I'm very thankful that I'm in this place now, and now I want to help save lives. I don't want anybody to go through what my family went through, because I felt like Robert lost his life on a fluke. I don't want anyone else to lose their life on a fluke. And I don't want Robert's death to be in vain.
if he had kept his seatbelt on, um, I really believe that would have spared him. If he would have worn his seatbelt, it would have been a different story today. If you're too tired, pull over. If you, if you can't drive, pull over, call someone else, you know, stay at a friend's house, whatever you have to do if you just can't make it home. In the case of Robert, it was a case of drowsy driving and it took his life. But if I would have got a phone call, the call, and Robert said, Mom, we're really tired. We're gonna pull over and sleep a little bit, maybe an hour, and then we're gonna be on home. I would have loved to have gotten that call as opposed to the call that I got. It wasn't like he caught an incurable disease, that they had no medical way of helping him out. It was an accident and it could have been prevented. When Robert lost his life, we all lost too. Everybody that loved him, everybody around him, we miss him, we're all hurting. And you know what the real truth is? We'll never be the same. We move forward with our lives, but we'll never be the same. So please be safe for you but please be safe for everyone else who loves you.